Well, maybe this is not what you'd expect of Achema, but here is where universities, where states, where companies present their new and exciting research and development projects. We're here today to see what's new in terms of energy. Well, let's take a closer look. Could you please tell me something about this little aquarium of yours? Yeah, this is a photobioreactor we're using to cultivate microalgae. And they're using photosynthesis to build up biomass from CO2 and sunlight, for example. And is there a potential use for this for, to gain renewable energies? Yeah, microalgae are a source for biofuels, for example, hydrogen can be produced by certain strains, or um, some strains um, produce lipids, which can be converted to biodiesel, for example. Algae cultures cultivated in bioreactors can grow with minimal impact on fresh water resources, yet provide much higher yields per area than common biofuel crops. Industry insiders claim that algae can produce more oil in an area the size of a two-car garage than a football field of soybeans, because almost the entire organism can use sunlight to produce lipids or oil. Now this looks like every boy's dream. With me is Mr. Jörn Wiel. Mr. Wiel, what are you doing here? Are you playing with Lego? Definitely not. This is a LEGO model which depicts a visionary biorefinery process going from the raw material to the final product, in our case a fuel, a modern fuel with low emissions. Um, this is based on our research uh, conducted in the cluster of excellent tailor-made fuels from biomass. And this model has two advantages, namely it easily depicts what is chemical engineering like for our students and undergraduates, but we can easily go into detail for our scientific experts. And in particular, we have here the individual steps of chemical engineering or process engineering, namely mechanical pretreatment, where we comminute the wood, then chemical pretreatment of the biomass in novel solvents, which are then, um, enabled, then enabled to convert the biomarker molecules to fuel candidates um, and then need to be further separated in membrane separation steps and distillation sequences. Traditional biofuels like biodiesel or ethanol from sugarcane or corn are highly controversial because of their environmental impact and their effect on food prices. So-called second-generation biofuels that use sustainable feedstock such as agraic residues, algae or non-food products could become a game-changer in the near future. The use of enzymatic processes in biorefineries could therefore help to access previously unusable materials such as sawdust, wood chips or citrus peels. Modern second-generation biorefineries currently only exist as pilot plants, although first commercial-scale applications are under construction. Charcoal always reminds me of having a barbecue. Now we're meeting Sabrina Stengel, who will explain us what these materials have to do with sustainable energy. Yeah, what we make is uh, not the usual charcoal. Um, we convert uh, residual biomass, like wastes, uh, um, into coal. We use two different processes to convert the biomass and uh, after that we uh, briquette the uh, coal into briquettes for uh, heating issues. And what kind of raw materials are used for this process? Everything uh, that uh, cannot be used in a different way um, other than uh, going to waste. Um, it's for instance bark from trees which cannot be used in the pelleting process or spent grains from the brewing process, um, beet pulp or straw, hay, everything which is a residual biomass. Solid biofuels like wood coal are a way to densify any biomass product that is inconvenient for use as a combustible. Most of the used raw materials are byproducts, residues and waste products of other processes such as farming, animal husbandry and forestry. While there is no competition between fuel and food production, the properties of solid fuels often limit them to a local use or to use in big thermal power plants. Despite the enormous potential, bioenergy still has a long way to go. Feedstock supply, insufficient infrastructure and high capital cost could actually prevent the industry from unlocking the value of this resource. It will be up to policymakers, industry stakeholders and energy experts to promote the broader use of this technology. The impressive projects exhibited at Achama 2012 underline the potential that these processes offer. <laughs>